Sorry, I have three other interviews to do before this party's over. Yeah, but they're not working on something that'll change the world as we know it. They say they are. Yeah, but they're lying. Beneath the formidable reputations of Jeff Goldblum's charm, Gina Davis's grit and David Cronenberg's uncanny body horror sits The Fly, a film which is incredibly misunderstood. Al Porter turned her into a gene splicer. I'm a very good one, now I'm not Seth Brundle anymore. I'm the offspring of Brundle and Housefly. While The Fly and its stomach-turning body horror and surreal left-field story may be based on George Lagellan's 1957 short story of the same name, and its 1958 adaptation starring Vincent Price, <coughs> Cronenberg's classic is far more than a simple remake. Positioned with the contemporary and philosophical ideas that explore the line between the physical representation and virtual re-representation, and more importantly, inspired by Franz Kafka's The Metamorphosis, Cronenberg's classic reframes the entire surreal and graphic plot around the love story, effortlessly turning the metamorphosis of our main character into a dark, emotional tragedy. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and as requested, today we'll be exploring the misunderstood Kafkaesque nightmare that is the fly. The disease has just revealed its purpose. We don't have to worry about contagion anymore. I know what the disease wants. What does the disease want? It wants to turn me into something else. What do you think, a fly? Opening in a science fair, archetypal genius Seth Brundle, played by real-life archetypal genius Jeff Goldblum, and a very talented gymnast body double, convinces Gina Davis' Veronica, a reporter looking for her big break, to see what he's been building in his lab. What am I working on? Uh, I'm working on something that'll change the world and human life as we know it. A recluse with absolutely no social life like me, he dedicates all of his time and effort to his passion, teleportation. The hypothetical transfer of matter or energy from one point to another without traversing the physical space between them. And by some miracle, he seems to have cracked the code. Well? Great. Is that a hologram? Where's my stocking? That's it, the real one. Seth then offers up a deal. Veronica can cover his story in the long term, and then release a whole book featuring his discoveries, before trying to take his experiment to the next level by putting a live animal through, which horrifically fails. After planning a steak dinner, Seth chooses to run an experiment instead, putting both steaks through the teleporter. When Veronica reports that the steaks taste synthetic, Seth realizes that perhaps the computer is simply offering up an interpretation of the object, not the actual object itself. With this, Seth manages to fiddle with the programming and successfully teleport another baboon, before Veronica spots a delivery from her ex-boyfriend and current employer Stathis, one which threatened to upend Seth's research, prompting her to leave Seth and confront him. Misinterpreting her intentions, Seth gets drunk and stupidly decides to put his machine to the ultimate test, burying all as he jumps into the pot. Of course, things don't go as planned, with a small but very significant fly hovering into the booth with him, kickstarting the unholy fusion of man and fly. At first, his teleportation is assumed a success, but his fusion begins showing strange symptoms that manifest both psychologically and physiologically in Seth. Following the first moments of euphoria, he slowly transforms into a callous and unfeeling human-fly hybrid, bereft of his former intelligence, pride, and charm. You're afraid to dive into the plasma pool, aren't you? You're afraid to be destroyed, recreated, aren't you? Despite her efforts to show that something had gone wrong with the experiment... Those weird hairs that were growing out of your back, I took them to a lab. The guy at the lab had trouble identifying them. Very good. Very likely insect hairs. Seth kicks her out and spends the next four weeks losing more of his humanity. Veronica then soon finds out that she's pregnant with his child and dreams up a nightmarish scenario of giving birth to a man-sized maggot, prompting her to seek the help of Stathis for an emergency abortion. Discovering this, Brundlefly breaks into the clinic and takes her back to the lab with the aim of fusing all of them together. We'll be the ultimate family. A family of three 
joined together in one body, more human than I am alone. <laughs> Luckily, Dathis arrives just in time and severs the connection between the two pods, resulting in the fusion of Brundlefly with the machine itself, spewing out a pathetic mess of man, fly and machine that begs Veronica to end its misery. Instead of the traditional catharsis of killing the monster, Seth's death becomes a gut punch for both Veronica and the audience, because we all know that internally, Seth isn't the monster that his mind and body are transformed into. I'm an insect. <laughs> Who dreamt he was a man. I loved it, but now the dream is over and the insect is awake. The fly touches on one of the biggest questions when considering technology. What is the body in the age of machines, microchips and automation? In fact, we can see this from the very beginning of the film, when Seth is quite literally cut by a computer chipboard. Uh. Oh. This is, understandably, a huge topic in modern philosophy, and one viewers of this channel will know well, as we've covered it extensively in our deep dives of Her, Ex Machina, and The Matrix among others, which I'll be leaving links to below. A good starting point for this discussion is Seth's own words. He explains a teleportation device as offering up an interpretation of whatever is put through it. This leads us to one very important question. What is Seth when he emerges from the teleporter? A man? Half man and half fly? Or a computational interpretation falling somewhere between the two? This aligns with contemporary philosophical thought, such as the works of Theodore Negru, which interrogate the line between physical representation and virtual re-representation. This blurred line affects not only how we perceive the body as real or virtual, but also how we can understand what any body truly is in a world which sits firmly between the real and the virtual. But Seth's deterioration into a man-fly is more complex than a simple transmutation into another type of being. Instead, it's a slow metamorphosis, similar to that experienced in Kafka's most famous work. Kafka's The Metamorphosis is a legendary literary text, and anyone who's read it or is fortunate enough to have seen a theatrical production of it is sure to have it burned into their brain. In the short story, Gregor Samsa wakes up one morning to discover that he's been transformed into some kind of insect. But instead of being a horror unto itself, Kafka places the horror not being able to function as he had for so long, and not being able to go to work. And as the character stays bedbound, he slowly gets ignored by his family until they all but forget about him entirely, simply hoping for him to be got rid of. As the story ends, there's no fanfare for Gregor, just mundane chatter between the family about how they're ready to move on. While The Fly doesn't deal with the same mundanity as The Metamorphosis, it does have a number of narrative similarities. As both characters settle into their conditions, they cut themselves off from the world instead of seeking help, and die without the world knowing their name or appreciating all of their long hard years of work. This projects a very modern fear onto both texts, the fear of going unrecognised. But underneath is something perhaps even more familiar, the fact that both Seth and Gregor become totally defined by their work. Gregor wakes up like a robot, with his first worry being about how to get to work, while we meet Seth as a total social recluse, dedicated to nothing but his work. This comes back around to bite them both in the end, with Gregor being forgotten as a stranger lost to obscurity, while Seth quite literally fuses with his hard work and becomes a writhing mass of pathetic human labour. In this way, Veronica isn't just reluctantly blasting the head of man-fly machine Seth, she's destroying a vessel that has been rendered completely alien under the weight of overwork, social isolation and deteriorating health, lying somewhere on the spectrum offered up by Negra's real and virtual bodies. The tragedy of the fly's climax also doesn't just come from the romantic tragedy, but the reality that without work, or perhaps I should say purpose, the world simply doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, the computer confused there weren't supposed to be two separate genetic patterns and it decided to uh, splice us together. It made it as me and the fly. We hadn't even been properly introduced. 